Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chairman and CEO, Salesforce.com, Mark Benioff. Okay. All right. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. And um, is everyone having a good day? All right. Uh, well, it's great to see everybody out there and uh, love to get your feedback. You can uh, get to me on Twitter at Benioff. You can get to me on email at CEO at Salesforce.com. I'm on Facebook, uh, Benioff at Facebook. Uh, it's really my honor to introduce you to one of my really close friends. He's uh, really influenced my life in many incredibly exciting and positive ways. There's very few people that I've met in my life who can innovate between industries. You can see people who innovate in one industry, but rarely do you find somebody who can innovate on multiple industries. And whether it's his incredible work as a Grammy artist, and uh, I think between us we have seven Grammys now, is that right? Yeah. So uh, whether it's the Grammys, whether it's um, uh, his incredible work with uh, Coca-Cola and, and the ecology and his eco-cycle programs, uh, whether it's uh, incredible new companies uh, that he's starting, we're going to talk about that. You're really in for an incredible treat. We have a, just a phenomenal person uh, who is an innovator, um, uh, a master in the world of music, and also just has a huge heart and uh, has done amazing things philanthropically, and we'll talk about uh, that as well. But please give it up for Will I Am. And to all of you that we're going to put our backs to over here, you're welcome to move over uh, if you'd like to be on this side. There's some open seats behind us. Otherwise, goodbye. Okay. Welcome, Will. Hey, Mark. Hey, hey guys in the audience. And girls. <laughs> so welcome to Indianapolis. And uh, you're on your way to Paris, I think? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm going to Paris tonight. Um, tomorrow, I have this event with Lexus because I designed um, uh, my car with them. I take on their... Um, an X, so I'm really excited about about that revealing the, the vehicle that I designed with Lexus. Very exciting. Um, well, we've known each other a long time, and uh, you know, one of the things that I have been so impressed with with you, and um, I mean, a lot of people met you when you were with the Black Eyed Peas. I think that's when they probably first uh, first met Will I Am. But uh, you've, you know. We're, we're farther down that road, and they're meeting Will I, a different Will I Am. Of course, it's the same Will I Am, but <laughs> they starting to see the incre incredible dimensions. Um, what I'd like to try to do in the next uh, half an hour is try to give the audience the same experience of Will I Am that I know, and I guess I want to do that through a series of questions. Okay. So the, my first question is, what is your vision for the future? What's 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 future? This. Um, the future. Let's just put like uh, it's ten years from now, and maybe even sooner. Um, a lot of people are right now the hot topic. Um, in society, people are talking about wearables. A lot of people are talking about um, <clears throat> the Internet of Things. And the marriage of those two is that this conversation that we're having about wearables, the thing on your wrist that talks to a phone, that's not the future. That is a starting point. And what it looks like 10 years from now is the thing on your wrist that talks to a phone those two are not even in the equation. <clears throat> um, being very vague, but um, I'm developing um, and bringing what, what's going to happen in 10 years a lot 
closer. Because we already know where it's going, right? The ball is moving, and um, you, you know where it's going to land <clears throat> because it rhymes with what happened in the past. So you had big computers, and then from a big computer, you had a computer in your house. And a computer in your house, you had a computer that you took everywhere you went. Then, a, then you have computers that you're taking pictures with like crazy. People are just so, they want to take pictures. So, so where does it all go when they're now saying, put something on your wrist that talks to a phone? There's no reason why the thing on your wrist should be able to do everything. It doesn't necessarily have to talk to a phone at all. And from that point, it's not something on your wrist. It's something on your whole entire body. Um, and that's in my vision of what the future looks like sooner than 10 years. It's going to take 10 years for people to, if you went about it the way it went from big computers to computers in your pocket. Why just a pocket? It should be, every, it should be garments. <clears throat> and that's going to happen. What's the relationship between someone who has kind of gotten to the top of the music industry, so many number one songs, so many number one, so many number one albums, played the Super Bowl, the halftime show, and someone who can kind of see the future of the technology industry and is like wearing on his wrist his own vision for what the future looks like? How, how do you connect those two things? So to, to know the future, you got to really understand the past. And some people could say like, well, what does music have to do with technology? You sing songs. What, what, slow down, yeah, I sing songs. Mozart played the piano, but his songs sold pianos. Miles Davis plays the trumpet, but Miles Davis playing the trumpet sold trumpets. John Coltrane played the sax. And his playing inspired people to want to play the sax and buy saxes. <clears throat> Our music industry was always technology, right? It was GE, and the offshoot of GE was RCA. And RCA was not only the airwaves, um, it was also um, the record player when they purchased Victor's talking machine. And they didn't really know what to put on their hardware, so they got artists to sell Gramophones, gramophones. It first was gramophone, and that would that that gramophone is now our Grammy award. And we went from selling gramophones and music being played on gramophones to music being played on iPhones, and now we have iTunes. Soon you're going to have an an iPhone award or like a phony award. Anyways, I'm just saying. We were always selling technology. It's just that the people that wanted the artists to only sell music to, that was cu coupled with that vinyl or that CD that Philips made, they wanted to keep them in that box. So that if you sold out of that box, they deemed you as a sell out. In theory, we should have been selling cars because cars had music in it. Right, Motown, is Motor City, but to make cars there. Why couldn't they just couple an artist with a Cadillac instead of a gramophone? So once you see that that's what the past was, it doesn't have, the past doesn't have to repeat itself. The artist does not necessarily have to be in the backseat. The artist, right? Nowadays, here we are in the democratization of everything possible. Every single person out here, you're, you know, you could do, you could bring to market awesome stuff. They're bringing forth tools that allow you to CAD and then print stuff out, right? So to think about just two years ago, I had the concept of, oh my God, no, sorry, in 2008, I had the concept of EcoCycle, pitched it to Coca-Cola and made that a real thing. For those that don't know EcoCycle, it's e E-K-O-C, which is Coke in reverse. That stands for eco-cycle, eco-consumption, eco-community, eco-consciousness, where you are taking what would end up in a landfill 
and turn it into a base cloth and then licensing that base cloth to other companies to execute their sustainability efforts. So the first thing we had was EcoCycle Beats headphones, then EcoCycle Levi's, and EcoCycle, you know, a new era hats. Because my vision was, hey Coca-Cola, how do you guys become a verb? If you don't believe that big companies should become verbs, then you should Google it. So, <clears throat> equal cycle is that verb, the process of taking plastic and turn it into shoes. And then from there, I was like, oh wow, then we could do equal cycle 3D printers. And now we have an equal cycle 3D printer. I work with a company, 3D Systems, that saw that idea to create a filament that's made out of post consumer plastics. Now, there's tools for people that have ideas to quickly materialize them. The, democ the, the democratization of everything possible. So the artist is not just the guy that comes when the company needs to break through the noise to sell a product. Because right now, that's the way it is right now. Some guy's like, oh my gosh, we got this product. How do we get it to people? I don't know. Uh, people, we, don't, we call people customers. They don't even call people people anymore. They call them users. As soon as you disconnect from the person who is purchasing, you don't even know how to communicate with them. So you call a person like me to sell you this product. That day's done. Because right? people know the truth. That you can't buy into something when the person who made it you can't even identify with. And, that, and, the, and the telltale truth to that is what just happened with Beats. Beats is a brand that, a consumer electronics brand that I, I played a role in. Um, was one of the founding members with Jimmy, Dre, myself, LeBron, and a bunch of other folks. To see how an individual that has reach could bring to market a product, and at the time, Sennheiser, um, Shure, all the big pro audio companies didn't have the ability to impact culture. Bang & Olufsen, Bose, they sound amazing, but Beats was the jewelry. It was the accessory that people wore, that youth or people that aimed to be connected to culture, felt they were a part of it when they were in the gym and when they walked around, they wore beats and they weren't even playing music. That became, right now you walk down the airport, you see headphone stores. That wasn't the case in 2008. Just think what happened to airports from 2008 to 2000 and right now. So the artist has the ability to impact. The artist has the ability to bring forth you know, um, new products, if that artist has vision, of course. And, and uh, it will ring as truth when it comes from that artist's heart. So that's what's exciting right now, is that the giants, giants are, they're giants, but everybody has that, everybody has access to the same drinking well and when they sip from it, they can be a giant too. Speak of which. One of the things that you do so well and you just did it is you link products and technology to culture. And you pioneered this with your music, right? As you started as an artist, you were able to really get distribution through brands and, and, and culture. Um, what, how, do, how do you come up with that, and how do, how do you find those links? I travel a lot, and I, um, I like to sponge up um, the environments that I travel to and see the commonality in, uh, in people that you think don't match. I see the artists in the geek world those folks are some of the most impactful artists. We won't call them artists, but they're more artists. They, they, the geeks are more artists than artists are artists right now. Um, when I, and then what I mean by artists is uh, the Beatles 
if they were out today and they never existed in the past, the Beatles would be Apple. Apple to me is the Beatles. Um, the Rolling Stones are Facebook. Um, you know, that those are artists, people that bring people together. Right? The music used to be music was the first social network. You identified with people, and now we have this new paradigm, and it's changing rapidly. And um, so I see the commonality traveling and in linking um, tech, culture, um, philanthropy, and it's the new type of marketing. Right? Marketing is when you pay attention to the marketplace and you take, pay attention to the marketplace so much that you undermine the conditions of the community that you're marketing in. Um, and I believe what's coming is community when you pay attention to the community and by flourishing and building communities, you earn your keep to be able to suggest things to market in that community or communities that are synonymous with it around the world. You uh, were born in Los Angeles. You grew up in Boyle Heights. Yeah. You um, have a huge connection to that community. You are now building schools and, and uh, college acceleration programs in that community. You're someone who's not only creating all these new ideas, the music and technology or uh, marketing programs for these companies, but also you're committed to giving back. Where does that come from? So um, I, I come from um, Boyle Heights, which is... Um, a section of East Los Angeles, um, predominantly Mexican, with the only black family there. Um, poor. Um, but I didn't know I was poor until, I think, uh, the fourth grade. Because when you live in a poor neighborhood... Are, are you still poor? Am I still poor? I'll explain that. Yes, but the different poor. I pour my heart out to uh, help those that are poor. Um, so we, um, I found out I was poor in the fourth grade. I told my mom, hey mom, I have to go to school and um, with canned foods, because there's a canned food drive. Um, and we're collecting cans, food for the poor people. And my mom says, Willie, we, you ain't taking no canned food to school. I was like, Mom, but I'm going to get a, a U, what, unsatisfactory. She's like, well, you just going to be getting a U, ain't you? And so I didn't go to school with cans. And then that Thanksgiving, I see Brent and Brad walking up the projects where I'm from. And I'm like, hey, Brit and Brad, what are you guys doing here? I said, hey, William, we didn't see you in the caravan. I'm like, what do you mean? We came to bring the food to the poor families. I was like, oh, where are they at? <laughs> and they came to my house. And that's when I realized the day we were poor. And that really changed my, my viewpoint on like, wow, they, they came and brought us food. I was a recipient of someone's idea to help families out that were in need. And I was that, we were one of those families. And uh, I told myself whenever I was, whenever I'm successful, I was telling my mom, I'm gonna buy you a house. She's like, boy, don't you be trying to, don't you be making promises you can't keep. I was like, no, mom, I'm gonna do that. She's like, well, you better be sure, make sure you know what you're asking for. So first time I had the opportunity, I bought my mom a house. And I told myself that when I'm successful, I want to do what people did for us. 
So now we, um, my mom sent me out to Brentwood, Paravere, and Palisades. So I was traveling two hours away from my house ever since I was seven years old. So the other day I was talking to my mom. She was like, boy, don't you get tired of flying around? I was like, my, you were sending me off uh, two hours away from home ever since I was seven. That's like my mom was, my mom was 27. I was seven. I can't imagine sending a seven-year-old two hours away from home with no car. But to her, she was like, "Well, you could stay here. I could have, you could have went to school here, but then it's more risky for you to be here than you to go there." So I went to good, good schools. Um, changed my life. And now, the school that I went to is really no different than the school that I should have went to because they don't have a STEM program. The kids aren't, you know, there's no first robotics program at Brentwood, Paravira Palisades. There's no 3D printers in Brentwood, Paravira Palisades. So that good school that I went to, um, it kind of balanced out. Now, all the schools across Los Angeles are kind of shitty. So I was like, you know what? We started, you know, in Black Eyed Peas, when you're successful, they call you to whenever there's a natural disaster. There's a tsunami. Okay, we'll go and raise awareness so we can raise money. So my birthday, March 15th, 2005, I spent in uh, Bande Aceh um, doing tsunami relief. Um, and then I realized that there's a tsunami every day in the hood, a tsunami of uh, neglect, a tsunami of no opportunity, a tsunami of uh, perpetual um, negligence and aiming a kid at the age of nine to a prison because there's no investment in his or her education. And that business, um, this private, this private sector that invests in prisons isn't balanced with the private sector that invests in education. So you have people that, that are there. It's just sad. So I was like, I learned about um, Lorraine Jobs College Track and I asked her if she could bring it to my neighborhood. And then, um, then I realized that there's a lot of kids that graduate college and there's no jobs for them and that's the last thing I want to do is take a kid from the hood send them to college now that kid has debt and there's no way for him to pay that debt back so I asked if we could couple that program with the first robotics program and can I couple that program with a Esri um, GIS um, mapping program if we could couple it with a um, State Department um, 100,000 strong Chinese um, exchange student program. So I would go and meet with all these different program directors and people that have these awesome things and, and, and ask them to make this cluster that we call Transform. That's project-based learning. So our kids, when we first started three years ago, had 1.2 1, 1 GPA average or 0 .07. Some of them were failing bad. Now our kids, have 3.2s and 4.0s. Kids, we started with 60, now there's almost 300 kids in our program. And the, the, um, they're building robots, they're riding GIS maps, they're doing not hackathons. The word hackathon to me is weird, especially when it banks like, we're gonna have a hackathon. I'm like, wait a second, you got my money and you encouraging people to hack? <laughs> Why don't we just call them apathons? Because right? that's what these kids are doing. We want, we want to encourage them to, to build apps and be entrepreneurs and take them seriously. So now our kids are building apps and we have like apathons. Amazing, amazing stuff. I'm proud of those kids. Do you want our government to be doing more to help these kids?
that's a that's a heavy one. <clears throat> Cause I don't understand I can't I can't it's a mathematical equation, I don't even get it. I don't get why um it's so obvious. It's so obvious that technology is like the it's the most awesomest stuff on earth. Right? You have people that are worth tens of billions of dollars. You have companies that make more money and have more liquid money than the American government. It's all around technology. And I don't get it. I don't I don't understand why like it isn't mandatory. Right now as we speak, two thousand right now, every single elementary school has a basketball court. And only one company benefits from that basketball court. That's the NBA. There's no other NBA. It ain't like the ABA, American Basketball Association. It ain't UBA, the Universal. It's just NBA. One company benefits from that basketball court. It ain't like they're building basketball courts in elementary schools to keep people healthy. Because people have diabetes and obese in America right now at crazy rates. It don't make sense. Then, every junior high school, you have like a football field and a basketball court. Only one company benefits from that football field. That's the NFL. And it ain't like my sister's going to play for the NFL. And I'm not knocking sports. That's great. And then high school, you have basketball courts, football fields, and baseball fields. Only one company benefits from that baseball field. That's an MLB. But in elementary schools, junior high schools, and high schools, you don't really see like tech school, tech class. It ain't like, you'd be like, hey, where are you going, little Melissa? Oh, I'm going to six period. What are you doing for a six period? Oh, I'm, just, you know, studying iOS. It ain't like these kids are taking iOS in the freaking six, six period. It's crazy. It ain't like these kids are learning Android in the ninth grade, like, for fourth period, it's freaking nuts. It's crazy. I'm like, wait a second here. And this is, I don't even know how to solve. I, it's like it, and the more I look at it, the more since it doesn't make even more, and then I get angry. And then I don't want to get angry in public because then it's going to look like I don't support the president. But then I'm like, is it the president's fault or is it just America's freaking politics fault? And then I turn on TV and I watch the news and then, is it the news fault? Or is it just American priority fault? Like, who are we competing with? What is, where are we going? If America was a tech company, we would have the little booth at CES. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It makes no sense, really. And I love America, but there's certain things that just, if I look at it, I'm like, well, I don't get, I still don't understand this Congress thing. And I'm pretty sure everybody feels the same way. Like, I just don't get how it works. And shouldn't it be obvious? Shouldn't, what are, what are we morally trying to achieve? Do we realize that we are so much in debt? How do we even get out of debt? And what happens if there's these, these tech companies evaluations? If, what happens when a company that's worth X amount of billions of dollars, everyone just hops off that platform? And what if there's 20 of them? That's scary. Wow, this is kind of a very interesting um, configuration that we're in. Because we're going to look up 15 years from now and say, how the hell did we get here? And the answer is, we weren't paying attention to right now. We, we were not paying attention. We don't value the awesomeness of technology, right? A new product comes out. The, the one that is replacing was pretty awesome, really. You don't realize how awesome and all the hard work and innovation that is actually in these phones, but we don't value them. You know, I, when I was on a panel and they said, hey, 
do you think Apple's going to innovate? I'm like, wait a second, that iPhone 4 is still amazing. The iPhone 5 is awesome. But we have this thirst for new, 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 that we don't really value the recent new. And we don't even value how that recent new can change kids in, in inner cities' lives if they were a part of that conversation. Um, and how school reform should be, education reform should be the number one subject. That's terrorism if we have a society where there is no education reform because we'll be, it's terrifying what's going to happen 15 years from now when technology goes like this and edu the sentence is when artificial intelligence goes like this and group intelligence goes like that. That's terrifying. Um, so, and it's a national security issue and a human rights issue, actually. I don't know if that answered your question. <laughs> when I ask you um, if the government should get more involved in some of these kind of coarse social issues, it's, a, it's an emotional response from you, even more, deep, even more deeply than your focus on innovation or other aspects of your life. Why, wh where does that come from? Where's the emotion coming from, and what is that emotion? Well, the way my mind works is solving problems. I, I, am, I look at a situation, elevate, and be like, oh, oh, you should connect the dot like this, do, 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 do. But for some reason, when, I, when you ask me a question about politics, uh, it just it fries my brain, because it, it doesn't make sense that the dots just don't connect. It's like... They're opposite magnetic forces that even if you try to put them together, they just, they need to change the poles on the, on the magnet or flip them upside down. <clears throat> Sorry, to get all magnet and freaking metaphoric right here. Who else in your industry are you impressed with in terms of what they're what they're doing with their lives, and who, who inspires you? Um, in my industry, Jimmy Iving, what he was able to do with Beats, um, <clears throat> and how open-minded he was with seeing the configuration of the founders of Beats. Um, but then outside of my industry, people like yourself, um, Dean Kamen, um, Jack Dangerman, um, those, that's, my, that's my inspiration. My industry took me where I, where I went, but where I'm going, there's new things that, that inspire me. It's new fuel. I don't, I don't know where else or what else to do in, in the world of music the way, uh, what else can you do actually? And I don't say that in, a, in, a, in an arrogant way, it's just what else is there to do? We're, we're selling other people's product. And I don't know how we make money on Okay, if I was an actor on The Sopranos, then The Sopranos would say, okay, we're doing season X. Here's how much you get paid, and then we'll negotiate our contract. So I'm in the Black Eyed Peas. I have to pay to make my content. I have to pay for my videos, and they go online, and I don't know how I get paid. That's like Sopranos saying, hey, actor, uh, we're doing new Sopranos. 
I need you to pitch in some money and we're going to film this TV show and it's going to go online and I don't know how you're going to make money. So what artists have to do, then we go on tour and our songs license for a commercial or, and then publishing and collection money. So I think right now is a reset button where we have to reimagine just what music, the business of music is. Music is amazing right now. Anyone could impact culture right now. And actually the tools that are out there to entertain and connect. Wow. Imagine when De La So did De La So was dead, there was the internet. Imagine when the Beatles did Sgt. Pepper, there was the internet. Amazing right now. But the business of it, I don't really get that right now. I don't get it. So from business perspective and being creative with today's tools, do you want to make rhymes with words or do you want to make rhymes with product? When you do you make rhymes with how the user interface fits with the industrial design and how it fits in your world, right? It doesn't have, you don't have to rhyme words. You rhyme experiences. You rhyme product with culture and culture, you know, you rhyme Brazil with, with, Jap, with Japan. You figure out the commonality and you, you, you fuse it together. That's where my mind is at. Solving problems and uh, connecting dots and filling voids, right? My mind works. I see invisible buckets and those invisible buckets are voids and I aim to fill those voids and when those voids are filled, you cannot avoid its magnetic pull. Wordplay. About a year ago, you called me up and you said that you wanted to show me something and then you came over to my house and then you had this bracelet on your wrist and then you like somehow turned on the bracelet and like these icons started flying around your wrist and um, I never really seen anything like that. Where, what is that all about? And so I remember it. I was like talking to people that in my company. Um, so when when Beats first sold to HTC, I took my earnings and I adopted this team of engineers. I was like, I just need engineers around me, right? I just want want to hang out with engineers so I could come up with something and they make it. So I did that and I came to your house to show you the 3D printer and this device, but the 3D printer was it. I'm like, yo, Mark, I think you're gonna like this. You know, I have a, we're working on a 3D printer that prints and post-consumer plastics, right? Just think what this can do for education when, these, when this tool is in classrooms. And you liked the 3D printer and you said, what, what, what's that right there? I was like, oh, this is my company though. He was like, oh, the 3D printer is great. I remember it. He was like, the 3D printer is awesome. It's going to do great well. But that's your company? You built that? Yeah, 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 I built this. And, okay, so tell me more about it. Okay, it does this, it does that. It does this, it does that. You don't need a phone. It doesn't, all that tethering the phone thing. I don't get it. This is where it's at. This is where it's going. You could do this, you could do that, you could do that, you could do this. Check us out. Showed you demo. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And you were like, okay, stop. You need to focus on that. And you said, uh, focus on that. That's your new black eyed peas. I was like, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Focus on that. And then you said, Salesforce, we, we could put some enterprising apps on that. And I was like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. You really think it's that awesome? So basically, this is, this is everything. Everything that you have in your hand. It's not a smart watch. Um, it's not a smart watch. It's uh, a computer on your wrist. It doesn't, uh, music is awesome on it. 
it's uh, being very vague because we'd, um, we, Mark was awesome by giving us a, a pretty big uh, platform at Dreamforce this year. So we'll be announcing this at Dreamforce. Um, and most folks that are, one, once again, dot connecting, all the companies are like, yeah, we don't want a, we don't want a wearable. I want a smartwatch. And that's all they think about is something on your wrist. I'm like, what about all the other stuff? So I was like, you know what? It's cool. All right, engineers. Remember I told you that squad of engineers I got? I was like, look, check this out. I got this idea. Our device needs to talk to all these other things. And we need to make components. Because right now, these components don't exist. If you were making a jacket, the only thing you have access to is zippers, buttons. And there's like two companies that make zippers. It's YKK and, um, and Riri. And there's a bunch of buttons and clasps. But if you wanted to have a jacket, there's no components to make it fit, um, to make it super mega dope tech. So we need to make components. I can use you guys to make a component that does this. So I drew it up, and a couple weeks later, they show me a component. I'm like, but we don't know what it's for, Will. It ain't for you to know. I just need you to make the component. It's for me to know. And so then I, they gave me the component, and then um, we made an awesome jacket, and I put the device on. I'll stop right there, and I'll tell you why I needed this. So first you have to identify a problem. And then when you identify a problem, you have to solve that problem. So the problem when it comes to your wrist is battery life. Battery life. Right now in your iPhone, you have these Mofis, Mofi, 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 and these things that give you more juice. If you're gonna have something on your wrist, what are you gonna put on your watch? Or that device to give you more power? I was like, I need components. I need the components for my jacket so that when I have my jacket on, I can four days of power, five days of power. And if I have seven jackets throughout the week, I won't ever have to worry about my freaking battery ever dying again. And how come these big giant companies aren't thinking from that perspective? I was like, oh, that's right. Because we're supposed to do that. We see it going, what happens 10 years from now, let's just back up and make a jacket. Light jacket, heavy jacket, keeps you warm. Right, so jackets, that's kind of technology, the idea of getting some fur, putting it on your body to keep you from the winter. That's some like prehistoric shit right there. Right? What does a jacket in 2000 right now do for you? It allows you to have power. On when you communicate for days. I can't believe people say, oh my gosh, I don't have juice. We carry and lug around stuff that has more space to carry the simple things like energy. So we're going to be announcing a lot of that stuff at Dreamforce and how this device has a family of things that talk to it, that you put on your body. So those engineers, that the vision that I saw like four, two years, three years ago, um, paid off because now we have some pretty cool awesome shit Really like I was scared as shit going to that Apple launch. I'm like, wow, man Just when I thought I had something cool Apple's gonna launch a freaking watch and every Here's how my world works. I just pause there what happens is a company launches a product they need somebody to sell the product. They give a person like me like five million bucks to endorse that product. And then the product sells like crazy. And then we don't participate in the upside. Maybe the company gets a really big artist and they give that artist 10 million or $20 million. So then one day I was asking some guy who made something. I said, how much did it cost you to make that prototype you got there? Oh, wow, that's cost me $3 million. $3 million? Are you serious? 
Well, how about, when you go to market, how much is it going to cost? Oh, well, what we're going to do is we're going to start our A round and uh, probably going to get to a couple of prototypes, uh, working prototypes. You know, uh, we need seed money at around five, seven million bucks. Then we're going to raise an A round and da 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 da. I was like, wow, my world does it backwards. Nobody in my world is willing to pay money to do anything. We just want upfront money. No one's ever in my world thinking about back end money. I was like, you know, I'm going to use my own money. And I'm going to invest in this little company. And I'm going to do that A round, B round shit too. <laughs> and so, <laughs> the difference between me and you is you don't know, you, you can't take it to market. You can't travel around the world with it. You can't tour it. You can't even make a song for it. You have to have a marketing company to make all your freaking commercials. I do that shit every day. Yeah. So, I funded it, and then we raised money after my um, a big hefty seed. So when I went to that Apple event, I was like, oh man. Shucks, I should have listened to my financial people. Then I left there like, oh, wow, there's a lane here for me. I'm thinking the giants would have thought what I was thinking, but they, wow, there's a lane here for me. And we went back to the office. We put across all of our family of products. And it, the, tomorrow looks awesome. It's an awesome time right now. And if I say awesome one more time, I'm going to write a song about it. Tonight, when you're uh, DJing here, um, you're going to be playing music from uh, this uh, device, is that right? Yeah, so they were like, hey, we want you to DJ at the uh, Salesforce event. I'm like, just cause a lot of people are going to be like, okay, cool, well, you, divide, you did a little smartwatch. To do a smartwatch that doesn't talk to a phone, a lot of times you're like, okay, how powerful is it? If you could DJ from my wrist, then it shows you the processing and how freaking awesome it is. Oops, I said awesome again. Anyways, so I'm going to be DJing from my wrist. It's not talking to a phone, is isn't talking to a computer, it's all right here. Because um, I vision one day I'm going to go on stage and I'm going to say, play I Got a Feeling. And the music's going to be coming from my wrist. And then I'm going to be freaking rapping right here with my wrist. The music's coming from my band. This is my new band. <laughs> this band right here. This is the new band. The band ain't behind me. The band is around me. Boom, boom, boom. Rocking, 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 rocking. And if I'm improving, think about all the things you could do if you're improving or you're speaking. People's like, do you remember what you did? Nope, I didn't. You could do voice notes here, take everything you, without revealing, I don't want to reveal too much, I want to save for Dreamforce, but it's freaking awesome. Thank you, and please thank Will I Am. Thanks, guys. All right, everybody. Hello. Day one is complete. Will I am Mark Benioff. Thank you so much. Connections is about motivating, inspiring, educating, provoking. Thank you so much for your time. We do appreciate you being with us. This is our favorite time of the year. Next, we have the Expo Hall. Please pay a visit to all of our sponsors and partners. There's amazing technology and companies in the Expo Hall. Tonight we have the music festival where we'll see Will I Am DJ from his watch. 
Tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., product keynote. Everybody, thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow morning.